Okay, so Becky, I know you're eating, but um, you you and Sylvie have received a bunch of e emails. Do you want to comment at all on what you're seeing, what you've seen, what you think we're leaving out? Mm. Oh, I don't know yeah. that. I don't. I don't. I didn't think of anything that's been left out. Um, I think it's it's a wonderful amount of work, and it covers the important stuff. So. Do you feel comfortable that you understand it? Um. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah. You don't need it for more. Good. Saves a lot of time. Okay. Yeah. And Sylvie, what's your perspective? Um, I'm comfortable with the plan. Um, I uh, don't have anything to add at this time. I think it was quite complete um, in, in a short amount of time. I think it'll be um, well received uh, and um, they'll appreciate all the effort that went into it. That would be nice. <laughs> that would be so nice. <laughs> Maybe we should talk a little because that's. I'm sorry, Jen. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I'm assuming the audience for this is report now is just the select board and the, the, the immediate meeting, but yeah, the, the immediate sure audience. audience. And, and my sense is the two things that they're most worried about are that the building not deteriorate mm -hmm. and that town not be on the hook for a lot of money. Yeah. And thirdly, it would be very nice if the project did some good for the town and people were happy with it. Um, but I, so if we can, I think the my sense is that the report should focus aim heavily on those points and stop trying to sell those. Well, and at least one seems quite concerned that we're not just um, high in the sky notions that we can actually accomplish no, anything that's, here. That's why we've got as much you know, all these mm -hmm. dependencies. Right. But the numbers are important. Yeah. But the numbers are important. Um, Having an actionable plan though that yeah. Yeah, so that the building doesn't deteriorate. Yeah, right. And I mean I do I think we do need to put more in sort of about timelines mm -hmm. and I actually well, continue. Um, well, just because so the I think that was one of the basis is faulty, in my opinion, of recommending Aubert Aubert's RFP because he's accomplished similar projects, though not in Waitley. Yeah. In Turner's Falls and Montague, I don't remember where the other places were. And people were, are like what he's done there. Mm -hmm. And so it, I think there is some sentiment that we know he can do this. Whereas I'm not sure we have the same benefit of the doubt. Well, I think Ninety a heck of a lot of that pressure goes away if once the roof is fixed, because then you have time to to go back and reconsider. And if it falls apart, you then can start another RFP process with a much better building to do it with. Yes, there is also the fact that this is the process that was used for the town hall. And it was more of a stretch than this is. I mean, we lived through that. Um, and we did that in a very similar manner. So I think with the analogy of the town hall, but once, and, and that's why I put this plan business in here with the, the one, two, three, four steps, which mm -hmm. in my mind is the timeline. And I'm, you know, we could, we, that to me was the timeline, um, whether it needs, we should take about a year to see, you know, but but you can start you can start work next fall on the roof. You can be 
doing the planning and feasibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. Right away. Um, you can you can't you can't do the construction grants till you get the feasibility grants. And that might take a couple years, but but I think it's all here. One of the things uh, that had come up, I think, was uh, the question of um, uh, relying on um, donations from from individuals in town. But this plan also is not relying on um, individual benefactors to support the work. So I think that that's a strong point too. Um, we there's there are funding sources that we're prepared to seek out that don't have to do with uh, benevolence or or you know doing that sort of fundraising work. So I think that's a good thing. Right. So so yeah, is there are we leaving is it a, a good decision, conscious decision to totally leave a capital campaign out of this? I would save it as a thing in your back pocket if needed. Yeah. And I mean we this presents as there's enough money. Okay. I think it's smart not to put that as um, something we're um, you know factoring in because then there's a question of well if that somehow to, it doesn't come to fruition. Yeah, I would work. go first if if there are questions about well what if you get less grant money? I would go first to the CPA and then we also haven't asked haven't explicitly listed uh, preservation. Um, capital funding, just just feasibility, because that's such a bitch to do. Having <laughs> been through this, forget we're recording. Oh, I think they need to know. <laughs> <laughs> that's the hardest. Thing. But um, I mean, one shouldn't one shouldn't criticize grant grant providers. But they were very difficult to deal with. But that's another. You know, there there are other options certainly, and. Capital campaign is one, but I wouldn't chart it out mm -hmm. first. Okay. I mean, it, I mean, I I don't know. I'm building all this on the town hall project, but would you project? Which I think is a good precedent, though. It's a, it. I mean, if there if there is a precedent in Colbert's work or whomever you know having done similar projects, the town has accomplished a similar project. Um, and also, I think that um, you know, if there's a question of, well, what if grant funding doesn't come through? There are there are potential roadblocks for any developer as well. So, I mean, as we've seen with um, you know, Bear's project of Blue School, there are things that could keep a timeline from moving forward with any project. So it's not specific to to this particular one. Mm -hmm. That for keeping money. Um, my sense about the town hall is that it's a great analogy, but it cuts both ways. Mm -hmm. That there was some sentiment expressed of is the town going to be able to withstand another long, drawn out process? Now, what that Sylvie wasn't here for that was Ooh. her position. No, okay, so how do you mean withstand? Yeah, what is the cost apart from like the um, emotional insurance? Or, oh. No, emotional. I mean, that people felt like that was divisive and it was a struggle for the town. I mean, I everybody I know that's in, that's fascinating because the people who were most against it have all come up to me afterwards and said, you know, it was we were wrong and it was a great thing to have been done. Okay, so that's um, that's good and, idea. and the town loves it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So many people use that space. Um, it was hard on the staff. And that's one reason that I think this nonprofit taking right. part of the load is, is a big help. But the staff was smaller. Mm -hmm. um, Donna Wiley, <laughs> there was a building committee that did a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And you would need another building committee. Okay, I mean this it, it had more this our this group is a visioning committee mm -hmm. and it was it, but it had contractors and uh, but you get help from we had Joan Switzit do the feasibility study and they then they were the architect in charge and the architect helps 
you don't do it all on your own. Right. And you pay the architect. Well, yeah. yeah, that's frustrating. Quick question: um, Are all the all the members of the Central School Vision Committee too are all um, prepared to continue on with this project? Um, you know, throughout the however much time it may take. Uh, you know, we have we have not asked. Okay. Um, you know, and I think the first question is even are they all willing to sign off on yeah. this? Yeah. Um. So that is something we will need to clarify. Um. I, the, I think you need a slightly different kind of committee. Right, yeah. I we mean, not only build their expertise, but somebody from the Historical Commission, somebody from, from the Housing Committee, undoubtedly, somebody, you know. Um, it's a, I'm not, not to say that these people couldn't also be on it, but it, it's, a, yeah. it's a working committee rather than a study committee. It'd be great if Mark Mark could be on it, for instance. Right. Um, but that's that's really not our decision. Right. Okay. Not our decision who's on it or if there is such a committee. Whether well, that's that's something that the feasibility study should recommend. It's well, I think the town think. should the town should think about what what sort of people and what. What's needed for implementation? Um, I was asking because no, it's a good question, and you know, you would want to have this idea be accepted, and then people be like, "Oh, well, I don't have the time or the the capacity to like work on it any further." So you don't want that momentum yeah. to to be withdrawn. Um, well, I think that's probably true for several people in the committee. I'm I'm willing to work on it. Um, the hero's going to be up there. Yeah. <laughs> He'll threaten his divorce if I find <laughs> <'cause I'm laughs> off the other committee. Um, Becky, you're very quiet. Well, I'm, I'm done with lunch, so I can talk a little more now. <clears throat> Yeah, I um I certainly care about this. I don't know how much I, I've just been so busy at work, so I'm not sure how much capacity I have to put a lot of work into it. Yeah. I think if there is a project that does things that the town wants, it won't be hard to get people okay. to serve. Mm -hmm. Or any harder than it is for any other committee. Right. Well, right. <laughs> but it is getting yeah. harder for all committees, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then again, there's least we then move us. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, does I the question of having a building committee should that be entered? Should that be in here? Should no, we I be saying that? I think we need acceptance of the concept, and then let's. I believe. Look, we we've got an excuse. We had. Ten days. Uh, <laughs> we haven't thought through everything. We think we, we're pretty proud of what we did. Yeah. Uh, usually, you get questions like that. I think. I think we shouldn't try to answer more than we're capable of. Um. Well, I mean, I think it could go in like you know the who goes, but I don't think we know the answer. <laughs> no, but ju just to say, discussion of a building committee to, um. You know, assist okay. in a feasibility study. I I wouldn't include it. Then I think that's one thing. If we can keep a, keep the focus on the financial, mm -hmm. you know, off the implementation as much as you know, off the okay. who's going to do the work. Okay. Should we take out that section altogether? Is well, I think we're going to have to have somewhere else. We have overlapping sections. So right, I know. That's work. why I want to try and. Yeah, I would take. Well, I, I was think. trying to just sort of go through what did they ask for mm -hmm. in the meeting. Yeah. Two weeks ago, and make sure we covered all those things. So I wanted to write them all out so we wouldn't forget them, but that doesn't have to be yeah. in the format I have them in. Um, 
I mean, maybe the, you know, your, the plan is the who does what. I think the plan is the who does what, and the, and the, I think it's the, well, I think the basics is, yeah, the plan is who does what, and, okay. and also I think I would argue that it's the timeline, but we can add more. Okay. So is there anything in your, it's your paragraph in who does what that isn't in the plan? I took out all references to what would be on what floor. Okay, and that's because you're relying on the feasibility study. Yeah, I, it, the, it dawned on me that a lot of that depends on things we don't, building code things that we aren't knowledgeable about. The reason I wanted some the reason I wrote something was in response to the Waitley needs housing. This would provide housing. That is a direct quote from the select board committee. And I wanted to make the point that our ideas provide more housing in addition to other uses that are meaningful to the town as now expressed twice in two surveys. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be in the format I put it at all, but I do think we want to make the point that what we're envisioning offers more than what our Brett O'Bear's envisioning. Mm -hmm. So whatever is the best way to do that, I think it's important. I think that's a hook. Yeah, I, I think the the fact that there's different opportunities for funding because of all because it would be a mixed use is a pretty powerful point. Well, I guess this is where you you should never go on your your own writing because I thought I did over that pretty well. So, um, first draft is always a first draft. No, no, I, I just trying to think where where would you so you so well, so the over intro and a summary or the basics. Um So add something about um, I don't want to track. Um, are you gonna did um did you touch on the parking situation or is that gonna be talked about later? In the we haven't talked about that yet. So the I stuck it in, I sent a second draft with Oh, right, right, okay. I didn't. This is the first draft I'd already put it out before yeah. you made the corrections. Um, so sorry about that. Um, so I, I added a sentence at the at the end of the cafe paragraph about okay, there is potential for these 14 parking spaces and parking at the library is also available. Okay. And people can come by bike and walk, and, but that was just mostly to take away the instinctive. There's no parking there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So. So I think the we believe. You know the 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 We've been being far more responsive to community desires, and what Becky just said about the value of multi-use because it accesses more funding sources mm -hmm. needs to go in the. I could go at the end of the 
second paragraph on the first page. Um, it, it, it's in a, it needs to go in one in that top part, I think. Um, I'm not sure if it's at the end. Yeah, because it with it starts. We believe that does all these it, good things. Whatever it this is, from, this is what it does, and. Since it does all this, we think it's it's a better proposal. It was more your wording just then was perfect. I put it in. okay. I put it after after you explain in more detail. We okay. believe it's more responsive. How did you, what did you just say? What I um, we believe it's we more believe responsive. But this alternative is far more responsive to community desires. It's, it's here already. I'm reading off of it. Oh, okay. Um, expressed both in the original survey related to the building and the recent envisioning the future of the town report or survey, whatever. Yeah, I think that's in there. Great. Okay. Yeah. The end of that. Yeah. And then. And um, and then Becky, you you said, and that it uh, could we say that it leverages and excuse some of those different opportunities for funding. Yeah, yeah. That that combination of being what the surveys basically described and the fact that there's more funding available because. Because it's multi-use, I mean that sort of that sweet spot. The fact that it's both is pretty powerful. And and takes advantage of multiple use, um, multiple streams of funding, multiple streams of funding available to a mixed-use property. Mm -hmm. Um, just one thought. Um, you may not even need to specify how the how a cafe might function in there, just so that uh, I, I I'm not sure that this would be the case. But if you give specific details about how the cafe might be run, then you might have people um, fixating on you know that particular yeah. business model not working in there. So you could maybe leave that a little bit more open ended if you want. Yeah. Where are you? Oh, um, so I'm down in the cafe paragraph. In what yeah. I wrote, sort of spelling out how each floor would be used, I think. Yeah, I think there's more, there's room for movement there. Just yeah. the idea of, I mean, an, an architect slash people interested in doing the, the retail or whatever could weigh in on what kind of space was needed and that sort of thing. I, under the basics, you talk a little bit about the, yeah. you know, having the um, caterers and that sort of thing. I'm a little uncomfortable doing the floor by floor bit. And I'm fine taking it out. I'm just, I wanna, so like I'm thinking. I'm, I'm not uncomfortable with comments there. I mean, you know, it's a, well, I, th I think we like, I'm just, Put in sort of with the basic structure stabilized, the building should be attractive to developable developers for multiple affordable housing units. Okay. Because I want to make the point that we're not just talking one. Yep. I mean that that's part of it. When you know, looking through what I was doing in my mind was looking through the square footage. Like there's enough square footage to do more than one high end house, and we don't yeah. want we don't need yeah. one high end house. I don't really house. think we have to make that case. But Fred's email I was totally to think we have to make that case no. because that's what they picked. The they picked food. it because it was the only one they thought would work. That 
that there was a prayer of flying. Nobody is comfortable with it. Okay. Yeah, and the, the survey supports the fact that nobody wants the highest housing luxury homes. So right, and that I think they 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 just hated the pit. <laughs> Well, we got to have the guts to pick something else. Well, <laughs> we're doing our best. Yes, we are. Um, I think I think showing funding is the is central to this. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so, is it who is it you who would be writing the grants? Is it committee? Um, I think I would be working with you all, and I would be doing the administration of the grants and submitting. submitting uh, but you would, you know, help me to gather the relevant details, of course, as we go along for whichever grant. Building committee board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the building committee. But thank God, though. I mean, that's yeah. right. That's a big progression. I can tell you what happened with with the town hall. With the town hall. Um, it varied to some extent with the grant. Um, Donna Wiley and I did 90% of the preservation funding grant. Mm -hmm. um, the Green Communities Grant, yeah, I, I, I haven't seen the application form for these facilities through the underutilized program. The Green Communities Grant was, it's a very interesting one because you kind of fill out, I need 10, five HVAC heat pumps, you know, and I need Two hot water heaters, and I uh -huh. need I need without fifteen sort of light fixtures. What and you know well, of of such and such. You know you you give them very specific detail about each item, and then you get funding for it mm -hmm. without having detailed exactly how it's being used. So you no, figured you, that out. No, you separately. have. That's why you have the feasibility plan because okay. you need to have all this stuff. Okay, um, sitting there. <laughs> I mean. it's Okay. Um, yeah. But and and that's. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say. So, like for the Green Communities <laughs> Grant, there um, maybe multiple different you know projects that are all going to um, be asking for funding from Green Communities. So that like I would be um, trying to help coordinate that. Of course, like whatever you the whatever the building committee would want to take uh, ownership of in terms of. Grants, that's fine. Um, I can be involved to whatever extent um, would be helpful and wanted. Um, but on grants where there there needs to be some coordination, then I would definitely need to um, be part of that discussion. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shame you to your desk. <laughs> um. Um, does it make sense to add to the end of the basics we, where you've ended talking about meeting space cafe, um, office space, just something like because of the available square footage, these are all possible options. You can elaborate on that. getting off easy here then yeah i know i i'm are you guys writing um directly on your jenny your um draft usage is that what you're working on because i'm looking uh, at it i'm just thinking um i'm trying to incorporate the points i made into Judy, uh, judy's draft okay gotcha um i think i don't think you should we should talk about using the CPA money as a bad thing. Or, yeah. you no, know, in other words, this is an incredible opportunity to use 
town funding for something that the town wants. Right. Yeah, I agreed. Yeah, good. I, I mean, I wondered about that. I just I noticed it was a comment in the reports. Yep. You know, that it got used on. Um, but it, it's like, you know, with other CPA funding stuff, I'm sure if I remember correctly, the town hall stuff required, like, there were a few surveys that went out. I think if I remember, you know, it's been a while, you would CPA, know. CPA committed uh, $750 million for the town hall directly and paid for the feasibility grant, for the match for the mm -hmm. feasibility grant. And they did $400 million in borrowing. And nobody, it, it went over very easily. It, Okay. Thousands. Handling over the feasibility, the feasibility study was hard to get. The actual project financing went through without a hiccup. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is this is exactly the kind of thing the CPA money. Exactly, is and for. Um, I think maybe you, I, I'm on the CPC, as you probably know, um, and have been for the whole time it's been in effect. We've given out two million dollars in projects. None of them for affordable housing. Mm, wow. There you go. I mean, that that is a stat to absolutely to include in this. Like, shame on us, right? No, I, I don't want to make the housing committee look bad. No, 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 but it's more like... I this mean, is an opportunity to provide some right. of the kind of housing right. that exactly. people in the town want. That's how you want to spin it. No, but... In other words, this is an opportunity to use money that's dedicated for, um, sorry, for um, for town desires. We've already done the work to find that this is what the town wants. So um, it's 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 sort of almost like inverted, where you know, again, um, with CPA funds, I I think, I mean, so Judy, are you saying that in the past when we've used CPA funds, we haven't had to throw it by the town to see if they agree or not, or is or is oh, that no. yeah. every CPA project has to be approved at town meeting? Right. So we've already okay. done that work. I mean, granted, we would do it again, but still, we've already done work that shows this is what town people want. So it just, it, in other words, it's a good fit. The objections have been the private owned uses, right? Has there been objections to using CPA money passed. for anything they else? They all passed. I know, but they, there, there were some objections to the oh. privately funded stuff. Yeah, but yeah, that was that was more difficult and right. justifiably so because it's not yeah. it's demonstrably yeah. a public good. Okay. Um, all right, so we've made some additions in the beginning paragraph and the basics. Is there anything about the next sections? The numbers reference a minute, that's attachment three. What's attachment number two? One is the expenses. Okay. And two is the grant from the So the expenses where I put the costs. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think it makes more sense as an attachment. Yeah, that's fine. I just want to. So, so I had that as a. The order is not. I think that's the one that I'm going to care most about. So I put it first. But yeah. So I had that as one. I had the grants as two. I had, and this, this other one needs a heading, I think, but all the housing stuff I know is three. Okay. Or is the parking? Mm -hmm. 
five is just propaganda. <laughs> Attachments one, which was two, grant one. Okay. And then what was three? Well, it's this one that starts possible housing partners, which we probably have a heading of. Um, well, it's housing, what, where's uh, housing component? No, I think that's fine. It goes on to rents. Yeah. By the way, those rents will be paid to the to the nonprofit or to, to the town? To the nonprofit, and they would have to pay for the financing on that part. What do you mean, pay for the financing? Well, if the nonprofit is going to get loans to, to do the, to the work, it would have to be a mortgage or, or construction mm -hmm. loan mortgage. Okay. And so the rents would go to, they would then they would sublet and the rents would go to pay for the loans uh -huh. and the administration fees. And and I think there would be an and when we write the expense, the operating expense paragraph, I think there'd be enough effort to contribute to the building. Okay. Um, utilities. I mean they would pay their utilities. So uh, um If they were not a housing partner, what would it take to create a um, nonprofit that supports the center school? So I couldn't. Sylvie so said some lengths about how towns do it. Um, there's um we had just the general process through for Massachusetts you, incorporating you form a basically a 501c3 like like friends of the library right so well that's what I was and the friends of the library and then the, the nonprofit would presumably um hire hire a contractor to do the reconstruction and um and a consultant one of these Nonprofit consultants to do the administration of the of the rents and the um, you have to you have to certify the affordability and all of that. So there's formulas formulas. So so there's there's standard landlord responsibilities, and then there's some extra extra right. ones to do right. affordability. But that that can there are consultants who do that. Yeah, the rural development. People will do that. It's hopefully, yeah. But I mean, so it's just creating this entity, and there would probably have to be a board of directors. But then that entity would would hire the help. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's good you have that option. If for any reason there were trouble finding a housing partner, mm -hmm. um, there's the historic preservation listserv has had a couple of examples where. Other towns have done this. One of them restored an old firehouse as well. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Did we go back to the question Sylvie asked about the parking? Did my does that does that answer? Was that, oh, does that answer you? Is that enough for the parking? Um yeah, I didn't know if you were going to include that um, the visual that you showed. Yeah, me. yeah, okay. Number four. <laughs> so, right. okay. so the I parking. didn't see that in the attachments, but maybe it was a separate email that I didn't print off here. Right, so we I need we, we need the parking. Yes, I think that's what this um this from the 
So I, I think it needs just sort of a summary, which should say this is what the town wants, mm -hmm. and we've shown you it can be done. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> um, so that the these charts are, you know, this this is the summary. Um, Why don't you to to go at the very end? Yeah, before the attachments. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, it also needs a, an operating expense, a paragraph about the, what it's going to cost the town going forward to run this building. Forward from what point? From the time it starts functioning. Mm -hmm. We know that before we know how we use it. Well, I would talk around it because we don't have any. Well, I mean, no, but what I, specific we have, and and this, you know, bug me is that we're complaining about the cost of running the building now, but you know, the the office space that Becky said she would use paid for the current expense. Yeah. Well, and the current expense. Well, except there will be more. So, no, there'd be well, t yes and no, because there'd actually be heat. Yeah, I mean, there there would yeah. be more, but there. But I think my can... point is that the expense of running the building now has been exaggerated, and you know the first piece of it that gets finished and can be used pays what the town's already paying. Well. The the four or so thousand that it costs now to keep it insured, um, would that immediately be offset by something? Well, let me let's talk it through. Um, the operating expenses are insurance and utilities and ground maintenance, like plowing and mowing, which yeah. are they doing now? Which they're doing now, yeah. So, so I'm just going to leave that out, but okay. Uh, utilities are water and electricity, or will be. Um, the tenants and the affordable units would pay for their utilities, mm -hmm. so yeah. um, Insurance will fall because it costs more to insure it. Oh, not deep, but yeah, the insurance would fall a lot, but not but, until construction is yeah, done. Well, we, they, I don't think they're as concerned about the immediate period. Okay. I think they're concerned about a drag on the future mm -hmm. forever. <laughs> um, I think given, especially if we can get a solar facility in there, which I would be happy to. Right. Assume. Well, now is my next question. Is that in addressed anywhere in it, here? It is. Because I it know is. you've talked about it. It is. Yeah. It is. Okay. Um, and, and we put it in here again. Um, so the electricity, and I, I think a canopy solar there is a perfect idea, but you know, another possible option that's nowhere near as good is, is one of those big track mm -hmm. that rotates with the sun. That rotates with the yeah. sun. You do have space out front, I suppose. You couldn't, no, I don't. Put the lens for God. You wouldn't want to put it out there. Would it have a space in that? Would, I don't know. Probably no, probably not. So no. Um, if and Stan asked about on the roof, and one you don't put solar on a slate roof if it, if it winds up being slate, and two, um, the historical commission would be very unhappy to have solar on the roof. And um, then I think a canopy would be a great boon to the tenants. Yeah, that's a nice option, and it would also. Um... I mean, it's a little bit of protection for the cars and whatnot, but who went? Um, so the, I think the water isn't. Yeah. So I think it's fair to assume that, I think we can just say that the low cost of the units for the housing and the, you know, the fact of having a commercial tenant mm -hmm. as a part of an excuse would generate enough revenue. I'd be happy to write this. Um, we generate enough revenue to cover operating costs. Yeah. I mean, you know, 
point is that's the, that's the projection. That's what we're trying to yeah. make think, happen. I mean, I think if we run through, there's this, this, and this. We'll make the electricity as cheap as possible. We can as well pay. Is there anything that is there any generation of income for the town, or is it just covering costs? Oh. If there, I would you mean just covering costs. <laughs> That's what towns do. <laughs> towns do, but part of the argument for selling it, which is not selling it, it's giving it away, is that it would generate tax revenue. Mm -hmm. So if we project, I don't know whether the affordable housing would generate tax revenue or not. I think, yeah, I, I don't think we need to do go there because I think the, the people would be happy enough with the uses, but it could be that the, the housing would generate revenue. I, I know. If it were me, I wouldn't guarantee that it's going to generate money for the town. It's generating a public good and it's um, offsetting cost, which is wonderful. So. Might be good. Um, the Historical Society owns the post office mm -hmm. and they pay taxes. I don't know what they pay. They don't pay property taxes because they're they're a nonprofit, but they do have to file tax forms and they do have to be very careful not to generate more income than they do private donations, so it's like they pay federal taxes. I don't know whether it's clear whether there would be property, okay. any property taxes on this. Or okay, not. so what if an intangible, but I mean, if you have new people living in the town, those are new residents who are generating some, um, you know, cost of doing business sort of income. Yeah. Um, and also, if you have a public facility like a cafe, you're bringing revenue new into the town that we didn't have before. So it's and there will be, yeah, well, there will be revenue there from this, from this yeah. taxes. Right. Well, and also, as what I'm slowly learning doing the assessing is the higher a single resident's property taxes are, mm -hmm. it's bumping everybody up. Mm -hmm. So, alternate, you know, the, the, Yes, having a high-end house there would produce more property tax, but at a cost that isn't wholly beneficial. Mm -hmm. That's pretty complicated to try. I know. It's, I know. I'm <laughs> I still trying I, to wrap my head around it. I would leave. I think Sylvie just put it beautifully. Um, this this is providing a public good without. Creating a strain on the, mm -hmm. on the town, on the town finances. I mean, I would love to see all the people who bike through town have a place to stop. Yeah, absolutely. A bathroom. A <laughs> bathroom. Right. Yeah, me right. You laugh. I'm not I'm talking about <laughs> porta potties up at the library. Yeah, yeah. seriously. <laughs> I totally get it. I was a census worker, and you know we, that was one of the things we got to find a place to go to the bathroom. Yeah. It, it's the number of people who um, use the bushes at the uh, house next to town hall. It's just it's staggering. Um, yeah. Well, if you write the summary out, right? The yes. operating expense. We could do yep. it here. Do you want to do it here? We or, can do it here. Or. Um, We'll go home and do it. <laughs> do it here. Okay. I'm, I'm good. I'm good to people. Yeah, to do it here. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I um, said we're meeting to run for in Zoom to run until 5 30, but if you need more time than that, I'm sure there's. would be wonderful. We should be done by one Yeah. We'll go check in my office there.
I think Becky's falling asleep. No, I'm I'm doing I'm reading a dermatology article. Okay. <laughs> but I'm here to support you. Okay. Great job of multitasking. I think it's more like sequential unitasking. Yes, you're right. in college, I'm studying there. <laughs> it's been too long. <laughs> Be fine. <laughs> you ready, Becky? I'm ready. Uh, uh, what what section is this? 
I'm doing operating expenses, which would come in the number section after after the at the at the end of what I had written. So I, I guess what you would do is put um, construction. Anyway, would, so it would come at the end of what, what I had written. Yeah. So what I have is the main, excuse me, the main operating expenses for the building are insurance util and utilities. Insurance is currently $4,600 a year and would be lower for an occupied building. Rents from the, oh, we anticipate canopy solar, solar to lower utility costs, to lower electricity costs. Because the housing unit costs are projected to be small, rents from the housing tenants should be adequate to cover the housing uh, financing and administration, as well as to contribute some towards the operating expenses of the remainder of the building. Okay. The commercial tenants would provide their own custodial services and their rent should be adequate to pay for the remainder of the operating cost burden. Okay, read that second sentence again. The commercial tenant more tenants. Yeah, no, the the because the residential unit the cost because of the because the housing unit costs are projected to be small. Rents from the housing tenants should be adequate to cover the housing financing and administration. That's the payment to the to the nonprofit housing and financing and administration, as well as to contribute to the, to contribute some revenue towards, towards the, um, towards the basic operating expenses of the building. Yeah, to the town's operating expenses. Would that work? I mean, basically, all it's saying is there should be enough revenue, right? We, and, and we can't do numbers, but I think just pointing out the the rents are fairly high for for affordable units compared to rents are high for no, I mean, it's for saying for everything. But you can you can charge <clears throat> higher rents than I mean, it's allowed to charge higher rents than a lot of people think. Mm -hmm. There, there would be more revenue, I think, than a lot of people think, and so, and that's partly, and because, because the initial cost of the, at least with these numbers of the units is pretty small, the financing um, wouldn't be as expensive. I, I can elaborate on that. This is uh, answering the question of whether, like, from the nonprofits, from the um. Housing partners' perspective, the cost of the rent would cover their expenses from having built out the. What I'm trying to say is, I think it would cover. You know, obviously, I don't want to mention. Um, I think the rent should be enough to cover not only the not the financing and the nonprofits' expenses, mm -hmm. but to contribute some additional towards okay. the town's expenses. Okay. And those details, though, would have to be worked out once we establish a partner and figure out all the, the intricacies yeah. of that relationship. Yeah, and no, mm -hmm. we, we really. So basically, we don't know the size of the building, the units. We don't. Yeah. Well, so there's no shortfall of, of money to cover, to make the project sustainable. Yeah, I I think is the main point. <laughs> yeah, I think actually the basic. The town's share of the operating expenses would be pretty small. Right. Maybe it should probably should say that explicitly. Yeah, and also yeah. depending on the, how the the function of the you know, the community space ends up working out, if the operating expenses there may be um, sort of um, 
somebody else may be taking those on. It depends on what is decided about that shared space. But yeah, I mean, I will sort of you can either charge that. rent or you can make them pay their utilities. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> reasonable. Yeah. yeah, there are a lot of details, but it's like not anything that we can decide on. So. <laughs> No, but but I don't clarify things. I think do better with a keyboard. <laughs> Come on, you can do it right now. Um, I think we want to say that you know that the proposal okay, is based on the keyboard. So we could do have any suggested edits on the one through four which we wrote up the plan basically. So what the plan at our I like that it's like June to that's a good uh, solid time um timeline there start. Um, I'll cover in what you do
Um, I don't have any um, suggestions for that part. I just think it's good to, um, like one of you already said that um, if it comes up that um, we do all this and, and then, you know, can't um, keep the project going through to completion, then um, the building is still going to be in a much better um, state of repair. And um, I mean, we won't be, we won't be trying to solicit bids from a position of um, accepting whatever um, bids come our way because the building will be more valuable. Mm -hmm. Not that that needs to be said necessarily, but it I think enough. it's something to have for backup. Backup, yeah, than to, yeah. Um, other than to put up front. Yeah. And that's why that's why this CPA funding is and so important and also, you know, I I don't really think there'd be any problem with that at all. Yeah. Um, for for this purpose. <laughs> Purposes. Yeah, in other words, I don't think it would be um, a waste at all to use CPA funds to fix up the building, even if it were the case no. that we had to no. do another RFP process in the future. I think no, but then we should get more money for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, one of the reasons people didn't like the COG um, proposal, CG one, was that it wanted CPA money. Well, they wanted a lot of CPA money, not just uh, a but the main thing was they wanted CPA money and they didn't have a clear idea of what it was going to benefit, how it was going to benefit the town. Yeah, so right. Yeah. They basically wanted to come back to all the all the committees. They wanted the CPA money without any public good. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that was the <laughs> it might run extend up to the hmm? Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm.
Let me try again. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The main operating costs are insurance and utilities. You don't need to take a temp. Because the housing tenants would pay for their utilities, the town share would be relatively small. We anticipate the canopy solar would reduce electricity expenses. Insurance is currently $4,600 a year and would be lower when the building is occupied. The projected cost of the affordable units is low enough that it is possible that rents would cover not only loan servicing and management expenses of the nonprofit, but also be able to contribute to the town's costs. Commercial tenants would pay rent to cover the remainder of the insurance and utilities and would be expected to do their own custodial work. If there is a cafe, the town would also generate food tax revenue as well as benefit from additional visitorship. You want me to put it in or can you not? It doesn't matter. Either way, it's fine. Um, so, what I've got for the summary <coughs> draft is we believe that the above, accompanied by the aforementioned attachments, offers the town an alternative to selling the center school, which will be bullets or whatever, satisfies the requests and priorities of the town population recorded in the Wait in Waitley's comprehensive plan visioning survey, provides public good for most of the town's contingencies, relieves the town of the financial strain of maintaining the center school, preserves and restores a much loved corner store, cornerstone of the town's history. Not to mention historic district, which I don't know that should be in there. And then include this page. Yeah, well, okay. You want that right right there in the summary? I think this is really powerful. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? Well, I was gonna have it as last attachment, but um, doesn't matter. I, I didn't, I'm not sure about the phrase about the contingencies. Yeah, I wasn't either. Um, provides public good for most of the town's contingencies. Contingencies isn't the right word. What are you, what are you trying to say? <sighs> that we're satisfying the need of a broad cross section of the population. Or several constituencies, maybe. Constituency, that's the word. Right? Several constituencies. You left a, what that should very, if you put all the public good parts in, what it doesn't say is it shouldn't raise the tax rate. <laughs> I mean, you need to say without something about. Um, or it needs to say, we need to say it, something mm -hmm. about it should, uh, without um, provides public good for most of the town's constituencies without raising their tax base. I, I don't think most, many, many of the towns, yeah. several, several, many constituencies. You know, public good that, that the town Public good that the town clearly wants in, in ways that, the, yeah, whatever. And then I would have it well, accomplishes it. this without um, strain on municipal finances. Quite an amazing feat. <laughs> The town hall, there was, they had just, um, I've forgotten the term for it, but they, they had a revenue stream on the, on the um, 
selling power that they sell. The, um, the tenant um, pre-funded, you know, they sold it to the town, and yeah. so there was three hundred dollars, three hundred thousand dollars. So, so that was used, but no impact on the tax rate at all. They stopped supplementing with the minor P L E. What do you supplement? So then I just said I added it there. Um Accomplish with this without straining, hopefully supplementing town finance. No, don't put that. Don't put that. No. No. <laughs> Did I read the last part? We thank the select board for considering this proposal and hope that you will see enough value in it to proceed along its offered lines. Oh, yeah. Yes. And then I have a draft of everything. You want me to get you the attachments of the wood to say it? That's what I'm going to do for you. I think I've done it, but I don't have the parking one. And I don't have the cover page. The cover page should have been emailed to you. I haven't done that for the Did, did you? Yeah, that parking one was yeah. emailed. Yeah, a while ago. ago. A while ago. Yeah. So you can put the headings on? I think so. So yeah, let me finish drafting what we've just done and then send it out to everybody for editing and assuring them they're happy to have their names on it. <laughs> can I have it back by noon? Okay. By noon tomorrow. So the people have to Eleven to respond. That's yeah, that's right. reasonable, isn't it, to get it out to the select board? And, you know, yeah, I went it. And so that so that's what the next step is to send it to the select board. Yeah, so they can see it before the money. I guess. I, if it's okay with people, I'd also like to submit to the CPC, the Historical Commission, and the Housing Committee. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I don't know who all those people are, but I know. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> no, I think that I think the CPC will be the opportunity. And there's a lot of overlap. I mean, the CPC has a housing committee representative. Yes, mm -hmm. has a um, historical commission representative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Anything yeah. else we need to do? Thanks, Becky. <laughs> um, thanks, guys. It was amazing for the work, but it's worth it. It is worth it. You guys are all watching the basketball right there. <laughs> So we'll uh, receive emails. All right. All right. Everyone uh, who may be listening to this later on, <laughs> make sure to respond um, with your assent or any comments uh, so that this can be sent back to the select board in a timely manner for their review. <laughs> She's good at this stuff. <laughs> good night. Good, good night. night. Well, guys, have a great day. It's